Looking for a powerhouse desktop packed into a mini ITX form factor? The Framework desktop is here. Big performance, modular design, and cutting edge AI right in under five liters. Today, we're diving deep into this 2025 compact desktop with AMD Ryzen AI Max processors. And yes, we're seeing gaming and AI workloads in all their glory. Let's get started. Let's kick things off with what exactly this machine is. The Framework Desktop is a compact mini ITX desktop kit designed for folks who want power and flexibility without the bulk of traditional gaming rigs or workstations. We got the full PC option, meaning it should come with the case, power supply, and any configuration of components you select. Inside the box, you get a smaller box with nothing inside. I assume this box is for the NVMe drive if you decided to purchase one. We decided to use one of the NVMe we had lying around. Another box contains all the squares, Lego pieces for the front of the case. The USB-C modules and the power cable is also included. A box underneath holds the left side panel of the case. On a side note, there is actually a better performing left panel that you can print if you have a 3D printer. After that, you are greeted with the 120 mm CPU fan kit. This comes with a bracket and the choice of a generic one or a Noctua one. We went with the Noctua one, of course, and then we get the case with the system already attached inside. Underneath the systems are some stickers for decorations and a T5 screwdriver for NVMe installation. I got to admit though, the T5 screwdriver seems to be very high quality. The framework desktop comes mostly assembled, with the CPU and RAM already soldered onto the board. The heatsink is attached, and the entire board is already installed inside the chassis. The power supply also come pre-installed. The only portion that you have to put together is to install the SSD. There are two available slots, the front and back of the motherboard. We decided to install it in the front since it was easier to access. The CPU fan attaches to the plastic bracket and everything seats on top of the heatsink with four screws. The plastic bracket is actually lined with some kind of foam to reduce vibration during operations. To plug the fan header in, you have to remove the top panel of the case. It is held together with two thumb screws. After removing the screws, it easily slides to the rear and lifts out. What we especially like for all of these components is that they are all clearly labeled with arrows, making reassembling them easy. Once you install the fan header, you can install the side panel first before putting back the top panel and the screws. At this point, you can attach the two USB-C dongles that you have to select at ordering. We decided to go with one USB-C and one USB-A. And then last but not least, we can now attach all the tiles for the front panels. You can mix and match designs and colors during the order process, but I am a bit OCD, so I went with all black. Easier on the eyes. Let's get specific with the specs of the system. The Framework desktop features a powerful AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 processor built on the advanced Zen 5 architecture, boasting 16 cores and 32 threads with a maximum boost clock of up to 5.1 GHz. Manufactured using TSMC's 4 nanometer process, it includes a large 64 megabyte L3 cache. Graphics are handled by the AMD Radeon 8060S GPU based on RDNA 3.5 architecture with 40 compute units and 2,560 stream processors. Memory is a massive 128 gigabytes of soldered LPDDR5X running at 8,000 megatransfers per second, arranged as 16 gigabyte modules across eight channels. Storage includes dual M.2 2280 PCIe 4 slots, expandable up to eight terabytes per slot. Cooling is managed by a Noctua NFA 12x25 HS PWM 120 mm fan operating at just 28.8 decibels, paired with a heatsink comprised of six copper heat pipes, aluminum fins, and a Honeywell PTM7958 thermal interface compound. Power is supplied by a Flex ATX 400 watt 80 plus gold certified power supply with ATX 3.0 compliance and a Delta 40 mm fan featuring zero RPM mode. The unit weighs approximately 3.08 kilograms, or 6.79 pounds. On the unique side, this is the only variant system using the AI Max Plus 395 that offers a PCIe slot that is both 4X in size and 4X PCI 4.0 electrically. The only downside is that there is no opening in the rear of the case to attach anything. As for I.O., the rear offers one HDMI 2.1, two USB-C, USB 4, two DisplayPort 2.1 up to 10 gigabyte per sec, 
two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A, a Realtek RTL 8126 RJ45 5 gigabit Ethernet port, a 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack, and the power supply AC plug. It also includes Wi Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 for connectivity. Cooling is customizable. The framework desktop supports premium 120mm PWM fans from Noctua and Cooler Master, including an ARGB versions. The heatsink comes with six copper heat pipes and aluminum fins paired with high-end Honeywell thermal interface material. This advanced cooling solution manages to keep the CPU power envelope up to 140 watts without hitting thermal throttling under sustained workloads. Noise levels hover around 28 to 30 decibels on the Noctua fans, which is whisper quiet compared to typical gaming desktops. The only time where the noise meter register anything was when the PSU fan starts spinning. A unique feature that I found online is a custom side panel and fan duct for the chassis. It will reduce noise even further if you decided to print it out. If you are interested in it, head over to Noctua for the custom fan duct and grill STL files. All tests are average of multiple runs and with FSR 3 on where available. All games were tested with either maxed out or on high preset. Gaming performance is strong for an integrated GPU. Benchmarks show the framework desktop hitting comfortable frame rates on popular titles like Remnant 2 and even some AAA games like Expedition 33 at high settings. While it's not a replacement for top-tier discrete GPUs, the integrated graphics paired with the powerful CPU and generous memory allow smooth gameplay for casual titles. Here's a quick comparison with the B-Link GTR9 Pro, another AI Max Plus 395 system. For AI practitioners, this desktop is a dream. It's compact enough to fit on your desk, but powerful enough to handle data sets that normally require expensive server hardware. Framework's choice to solder high-speed memory further reduces bottlenecks common in AI workflows. It can run 32 billion models with the full 200,000 context length at over 40 tokens per second. Rockham is still not behaving nicely with Windows or Linux, so most of the tests are still running on Vulkan. There were a few models that did not load due to some errors with the Vulkan runtime module, so they are effectively given a zero on the chart. For DaVinci Resolve Studio version 20.2.1, using a four-minute project, I was able to scrub the timeline in both 4K and 1080p without any noticeable lag. It was zippy and definitely capable of performing video edits. The rendering time is also very respectable for both 4K and 1080p YouTube preset. It only becomes a problem when you try to use AI upscale. The same four minute video with 2X upscale pushed the rendering time all the way to one hour and 48 minutes. If you are looking for upscaling some old videos, I highly recommend going with a discrete NVIDIA RTX series GPU. Power consumption was pretty much similar to other AI Max Plus 395 system. The only part that surprised me was when the framework desktop is off. It does not draw any noticeable power from the wall. At least it draws so little power that my meter did not show any readings. The framework community loves the modular philosophy, but has voiced a few concerns. Some users wish for discrete GPU options down the line to boost gaming performance further. Others want a version pre-built rather than a DIY assembly. And pricing, while fair for the specs, may be steep for some on a budget. Framework is transparent about these points and regularly updates the marketplace with new components and improvements based on user feedback. And speaking of components, there will be more and more components to customize this desktop over time. There is already a few cool projects out there for the Framework desktop, like the one where Jeff Geerling demonstrate pairing four of these desktops together in a cluster for AI workloads. The possibilities are endless, and with a large community working behind the scene, I'm sure there will be more things that will make the Framework desktop more and more appealing with time. So who should consider the Framework desktop? If you want a compact gaming PC that doubles as an AI compute station and can afford the high price tag, this could be your next build. It's a machine that matches power with conscience and flexibility with future readiness, all in a small form factor, designed to impress in all its glory. If you're excited to build your own framework desktop or want to see more specific benchmarks and build guides, hit that like button, subscribe, and drop your questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next Deep Tech Review.